Hi, this is Gary Auden. Welcome to this EDUCAST, Multicast Paging with SIP, The Missing Link, sponsored by Telecom Reseller and SNOM. Today we have myself and Tommy Lee, Vice President of Sales for VTEC SNOM. And Tommy and I have talked many times in EDUCAST before, but not about public address systems. And I think public address systems are one of those things that most people completely underestimate. They just say, oh, we need it, and they just put something in, and there's a bit more to it than that. But also, you'd want to take your public address system and integrate it with your unified communications platform. So, Tommy, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about the problems of PAs, then selecting one. Something many people don't think about, and that is creating public address zones rather than just making everything universal. We're going to then move into design challenges and discuss some solutions. Sure. There's always the big question out there. How do I evolve from my old platform to my new platform? Yeah, the old platform uh, typically has uh, a working speaker system as well as an amplifier in place. Very often when vendors come in and upgrade the phone audio system, what they do is they upgrade the, tele the telephone system to voice but they leave a gap uh, in often in former uh, PBX solutions you had solutions that managed both systems at once and most phone systems today only manage the, the, the audio voice from people but never to addressing the existing broadcast system so what the PA1 does serves as a SIP bridge that bridges the gap between the new PBX, SIP-based PBX, as well as the, uh, the PA system that's fully operational and working in an organization. Let's focus on the business problems a bit more for the audience. Many organizations use a legacy PBX. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. And when we go ahead and convert, uh, very often the old system is something that is fully operational uh, and uh, sometimes people may, pro may propose a very expensive system like converting their speakers into an IP-based system as well as upgrading all of their infrastructure. Now, you know, that is a costly uh, solution and if people that could afford it is great, but very often, you know, nine out of ten times the existing system already works. So what we do is when they upgrade the, their PBX into a SIP-based system, now you can use the PA1 to bridge the gap. So now what it does is you can really call uh, an extension to address any PA that you want to announce so that in a new system you would just go and dial extension 100 and have that 100 address everything on the PA. And you mentioned earlier about zones. Uh, very often you may want to address different zones within an organization and the PA1 gives you that flexibility to do that. We're talking about announcements here, and a lot of people just say, well, that's just an announcement. But I think there are five major points we need to discuss, like clarity and so forth. Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the clarity in, in the PA1 uh, you know, coincides with the high-definition voice uh, that exists on our phones as well. In fact, most of the main boards is identical so that it behaves as an auto-answering phone system. Uh, what you will see here is a campus, which is typically a very large uh, application, and I'll show you some examples about how, you know, it is very easy to bridge that gap from using a upgraded phone system to connecting it to your public announcement system. Now, the point that I'm trying to also make here is that it's got to be a good system and understandable on announcements. I ride the metro here in Washington, D.C., and most of the time, I have no idea what they're saying. Correct. In fact, uh, you know, th that, that, that is a, a, a big point of clarity. In this case, what you need to have is, you know, an existing speaker system that announces very clear, but you also have to have a bridge that, that, that communicates uh, your voice over HD, if possible, uh, and, and have that uh, clarity announced throughout the system. Again, you know, when you're in a a train system that's announcing an alternative route, you know, you want to make sure that people are very clear. In fact, uh, some of our applications uh, of the PA1 is made for transportation systems. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an application that we're already in today. That gets into the next point, and that is how do you think about selecting a PA system and why can you justify that selection? 
Well, in, in a PA system, uh, in most cases, most of the PA systems already exist uh, in many organizations. On the other hand, uh, for those that are going through an upgrade and they have no existing PA systems, there's really two methodologies by which you want to deploy our system. Um, and I will show you some diagrams that give you an idea about how to go ahead and deploy them. Um, what you can do is, is, uh, is, is really use the PA-1 as either a listening device or a transmitting device. And I'll get into some of the details on the next slide. You know, that a good slide, like we have to have in any technical presentation, we have to have a diagram. And this is a great picture to lead into what you're discussing. Agreed. I think, you know, a picture is always worth a thousand words. I mean, you know, the PA-1 is a very simple system. Um, in this diagram, what you will see is that the PA can also serve as what we call a multicast server. So what it does is you can assign a single PA four different extensions. Let's just say for simplicity, we'd call it 101, 102, 103, and 104. Each one of those extensions, when you dial it, will do an auto answer to that extension. And then when it does an auto answer, it will then broadcast that particular uh, multicast address to each of the listening devices. Now on the lower end, you'll actually see there are two PA1s and a phone. You know, it shows a SNOM phone here, but this could be any SIP phone that's in the marketplace that has multicast capabilities. So any phone that's actually listening on that thing could actually uh, receive the message and be able to announce whatever it is that's connected to it, either to a person or in the case of PA systems, if it's hooked into uh, a speaker, it'll be able to announce that as well. Now, when I say speaker, each PA1 does have a 4-watt amplifier for it to directly bias a 8-ohm speaker that you could connect into the ceiling, or you could use the PA1 to, to uh, drive an existing amplifier that drives more than one speaker. That gets into the question of zones, and let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, what is a zone, and then what's its value to those implementing this? Absolutely. Um, I think in one of the zones is, uh, take example, for an education uh, system, uh, you may want to make uh, an announcement within a, a classroom. So say, for example, um, you know, a, a, a son by the name of James, you know, the parent showed up and, and needs to pick James up to do something. You may want to make an announcement within that classroom as one zone, or you may want to make a full school zone where you have all the systems announced uh, listening to a specific address that addresses everybody. So not only would it appear in not just one room, it appears in every room, including a hallway, as well as the principal's office, to be able to, to hear this announcement that's, that's set throughout the system. So one speaker can actually be a member of multiple zones then? Correct. That's correct. So one PA1 can handle multiple zones. That's correct. Let's talk about a three-zone example then. You know, here is a slide that kind of talks about a three-zone system. Um, you know, we, we talked one about the classroom, the hallway, and one is the administration office. So similar to the diagram that I showed before, one PA1 is shown to broadcast, in this case, three zones, one extension 100, 200, and 300, where in 100, it actually is assigned a specific uh, multicast port and as well as extension 200 and 300. And when you see below, you'll actually see in the classroom that it has a PA1 device that's listening to two different zones. So in the classroom, it has a 224.1.1.1. I don't want to get all digital on you, but for that address, that address is used to address everybody throughout the hallway, the administrative office. That's a common IP address that goes across all four where in fact the other uh, address is also the classroom where you could also say give it a unique address that only addresses that particular classroom and in this case it's classroom and hallway as well. So both of those IP addresses remain the same for two of those but the admin office doesn't necessarily have that IP address so it wouldn't necessarily do that. It's actually assigned a, a, a third port address for that so uh, 224.113 versus 112. And these are the different ways that you can address different zones uh, using the PA1 device. And each one of these PA1 devices I mentioned earlier can either drive a, a single speaker directly or uh, drive an existing amplifier. Do you have some recommendations for the designers who have to 
deal with this kind of situation, which in most cases, once it's put in, probably doesn't change for years. That's correct. Uh, in fact, very often when the PA1 system is set, uh, one of the hardest parts to do is once you, you know, drop the ceiling or you go into the closet, once it's working, it just basically sits back there and, and takes care of it on its own. Um, you know, it is, uh, the PA1 is set to, to mount on a rack, if it does have a rack system as well as a wall mount system. Uh, but once you get it set up and working, it should just work in the background. Uh, do an auto answer on the phone and, and be able to function just as reliable as your speakers do. So uh, one of the things we recommend is perhaps buying one or two of these things and doing a pilot test before you actually roll it out. And once you understand how to roll out one or two, then it's a matter of multiplying that, that, that uh, scenario for what you need throughout your client base. Let's move on and discuss the PA1 a bit more. Absolutely. Um, I mentioned earlier that it has two different roles. It serves as both a listener as well as a server. Now, in many cases, what you may do is you may walk into an office that automatically has an existing SIP-based phone system, and you just want to go ahead and bias the existing speaker. Well, in that case, all you really need to do is to put uh, an auto-answering device, namely the PA1, say, into your drop ceiling, uh, hook in a PoE uh, Ethernet cord to it and assign an extension just like you would a SIP phone. Once you dial that extension, that extension will do an auto answer to that extension and be able to drive either the amplifier or the existing speakers that, that it has been hooked into. The other, ser the other por portion that it can play is a server. Um, you can walk into a small business that states, hey, you know, I want to be able to make an announcement in the back loading dock or in, in, in the central office to say, hey, guess what? You know, someone brought in donuts this morning, uh, whatever you want to make, then this device could be uh, the calling device where you assign it several different extensions, and each extension can be assigned a, a specific uh, multicast IP address of which either the existing SIP phones or the PA1s would be able to listen to that multicast address and be able to hear any intercom or public announcement message that you announced throughout your organization. Now the next picture does have a bit more about the configuration of the PA1. Would you talk about some of the connections we have here? Absolutely. The, the main connections is really the uh, Ethernet ports that you see dead center of one of the, the, the side diagrams. So you can go ahead and connect a, a PoE port into the PA1, which will power the device. It also has the capability of using a power supply if you need to. Uh, on the other side, it also has a speaker connection that's driven with an internal 4-watt amplifier. And a great way to assign a, a, an IP address to this, because it doesn't have a speaker system, is you can connect a headset into the earphone and push one of the red buttons. And what that red button will do is really announce to the connected headphone its, its associated IP address. Once you have that IP address, you could take that onto any web browser and be able to configure this PA1 remotely. Um, some of the nice relays that it does have is that you can also connect this to trigger off relays to answer a door, or even uh, triggering relays to set off a strobe light in the case of having a visual notification for factories when when you know when the phone rings, um, nobody would be able to hear it in a loud factory, but be able to see something visual to have someone go over and pick up the phone. We have a screen on the next page about the SIP identity. Would you help us with this? Absolutely. Um, for those that are familiar with SIP phones, uh, this page should look very, very familiar. Um, if you notice on the side, there are four different identities, and this is really the basic home identity page one. Uh, you really need, you really only need three different inputs: uh, the registration of your SIP PBX, as well as the extension uh, and username and password that you assigned for that particular SIP extension. Um, you work this very similar as you would work. A, uh, as you would register a uh, SNOME or any other SIP phone. We have listening devices via multicast, but I'm not sure everyone in the audience understands what you're talking about. Would you focus on that for us? Absolutely. Um, each listening device, uh, specifically the PA1, 
um, has the ability to prioritize all the different multicast addresses that you assign to your network so that uh, a very important message uh, such as an emergency uh, announcement should be set to priority one. Uh, in that case, that uh, announcement would be you know, set as the highest priority so it will be able to handle if two people were to get on and make two different announcements, the priority one message would be the one that takes priority and be able to make that announcement to, to that uh, set. Unfortunately, there isn't a queue. Uh, this is a very simple device, but what it does do, it gives the end user the ability to design in and listen to what's most important uh, for, for, from a priority standpoint. Would you continue the discussion then into the multicast as far as zones go? No problem. Uh, with every listing device, this is the actual serving device. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is, talks about configuration identity one. And if you notice on the bottom line of, the, uh, of this identity, you will notice that it actually has a multicast relay address. This is actually where you would assign that multicast relay address that's shown on the little brackets where you dial an extension for a specific identity one and here is where you would actually set the multicast address and say ah this number will be equivalent to this particular zone and that's how you assign it on the server end. So I talked before about the listening end, this talks more about the server end of it. Something you haven't mentioned is the concept of an intercom which I thought, think is important in this as well. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, very often in an actual application, most people don't remember what these extensions are. And one of the nice things about Snow phones are function keys. And one of the things you can do is to be able to set up an intercom system so that anybody with the right, you know, capability can program a key to make an auto announcement to either a one-to-one -one, uh, call from phone to phone, or you can assign a particular extension on an intercom system and be able to dial with a push of a button stating either, you know, classes are over or, uh, you know, the floor is wet on aisle three, you know, depending on what you want to state. But uh, the good news is that, you know, people don't have to remember extensions. You can assign these to speed dials on a phone to make the overall operation very simple for the end user. So what that means is I don't really need training. It's kind of intuitive. That's correct. Uh, in fact, uh, most people would be able to say, hey, you know, you, could, uh, you can label this key uh, as an emergency call or as a general PA call for, for, to give anybody the capability to make these type of announcements. Now let's talk about how do you get one of these. There's a good product page, there's a support page, and then there's also the email contact. And Tommy's one of the people you would be talking to. And I would like to thank you very much, Tommy, for this presentation. And thank everyone for watching. You're very welcome, Gary. Thank you very much for your time.